a both innovative and incredibly inspiring story. You know, when Alan said in his keynote that in the digital world, technology presents this real paradox. It is the thing, this technology is the thing that will allow us to make human connections with our customers in the digital world. And I can't think of anything that gets more to the humanity of customers than using this kind of technology of connected devices and, and the cloud and Pegasus care management to actually improve people's health and improve their outcomes. A great example of being able to continuously pull insights from these devices and then drive the right actions. But doing that kind of innovation takes real speed. You need to be able to operate pretty quickly. You need to be constantly trying new things. You need to be changing as new devices arrive, or you've learned about new ways of interacting, new care patterns, for example, in the health industry. The problem is, in a lot of our environments, we have both systems and ways that we work that don't tend to operate at the pace of a sprint. They tend to operate a little bit like a marathon. And if you spend any time working on these systems, you probably sometimes feel like you're constantly on about mile 21 of that marathon, which is the worst part of the marathon. Uh, but what we really need to be able to do in our systems and in how we drive our organizations is operate sort of at both a sprint and a marathon. People have talked a lot about bimodal IT, being able to be simultaneously innovative while you're maintaining the existing legacy environment that you have. And to do that takes technology that is actually able to operate at that sprint pace of innovation and change and trying new things, but yet has the power to maintain the marathon that is transforming your business and, and getting to your long-term goals. And uh, I, I don't know of a better story of an organization that's really embraced that and built that model than Allianz Health. And I'm very excited to welcome to the stage Dr. Birgit Koenig, who is the CEO of Allianz Health, to tell us about the journey that they've been on. Dr. Koenig. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you. Let me start my talk with a short trailer to Gersner's speed. Reliability. Accuracy. Protecting what's precious. Agility. Speed. Driving innovation. Heritage and renewal. As you've seen, my story today is about heritage and renewal. It's about honored values of the past and a rapidly changing world we live in today. It's about accuracy, reliability, speed. It's about our digital transformation and, as Alan pointed out, most importantly, it's about the customer. As an insurance company, we need to be stable and reliable more than anything else especially in our IT systems. As a customer-focused company, though, with a large retail business, we also need to be agile and fast. We compete with companies that are born digital and that have no legacy systems. So, the questions I would like to answer today are, how are we transforming this either-or, either stable and reliable or agile and fast into a both and, both stable and reliable and agile and fast. And how is PEGA helping us on this journey? Allianz is a global company, as you know. We manage $1.5 trillion in assets. We insure 85 million customers, and we operate in 70 countries. And and that's very important for my story. Allianz is 125 years old. 125 years. <laughs> 
We're stronger than ever, and we believe that's not the least because of our focus on technical excellence. Actually, at Allianz, we are quite proud of our early adoption of technology. What well, that means? Well, I thought let's jointly travel back in time and have a look at our roots. In 1890, Carl Thema and Wilhelm Fink decided that insurance needed innovation. They raised 4 million mark in capital, the equivalent of 100 million US dollars in current value, and founded Allianz. Their approach was right on target, and business grew so quickly that a few years later, they had to take a first step towards higher process efficiency. They bought typewriters. Mechanical calculators and tabulators had been in use for a while. And in 1926, Allianz proudly entered the world of data processing. The fast growth of low-price insurances made automation a must, and vacuum tube-based hollow earth tabulators were introduced. Moderne Büromaschinen erleichtern die Arbeit. Das sehen wir hier in der neuzeitlich eingerichteten hollow earth Abteilung. From now on, clerks no longer had to copy totals from calculators into files. The machine would do that, operated with punch cards and with much higher speed and accuracy. In 1956, and with more than 10 million policies on their book, Allianz management took another bold step. As the first insurance company in all of Europe, they bought an IBM 650. With the Flugzeug aus den USA is to eben ein Elektronengehirn, IBM 650, für uns herübergeflogen worden. Das erste Gerät dieser Art, das in einem europäischen Wirtschaftsunternehmen arbeiten wird. Wow. And with that background, it's hardly surprising that my oldest customers are over 110 years old. They have insured, been insured with us for 75 years. Think about it. When they joined us, we managed their policies with vacuum tube operated punch card machines. Then decades later, with magnetic core processors. And now, of course, you guessed it with modern silicon-based RAMs. Just imagine how much technological change we've all squeezed into one single lifetime. But our customers, they don't care about innovation now, backend systems. All they demand is stability and reliability in our operations, no matter what. Now, stability and reliability in our backend systems comes at the price of slow speed of implementation. There's the intricate architectural design. There's very, very extensive testing. And as a result, we have long release cycles. With our history, there's another issue now. Not all our systems are built for fast adaptation. Some of them may be rather monolithic. Some of them may be programmed in languages that are not very common among young software e engineers anymore. There are moments when I think if we are not careful, we run into a recruiting problem here. <laughs> okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but only so slight. Now let me contrast that, our heritage, with the amazing developments we've seen in the healthcare market in the last years. In the last years, a totally new type of customer has appeared on the scene. This customer is born and raised digital, is socialized with one-click shopping, overnight delivery, loves to measure everything from steps to heartbeat, and expects to get things done instantly, by phone, and in self-service. You know that customer? And you also know that this customer is not very patient and accommodating anymore. Just not. Let me show you what this means for us in practice. Digital changes customer expectations dramatically. People pick up their phones close to 100 times a day. They expect us to deliver compelling and personalized experiences 
mobile, flawless, and fast. That we make their life easier. No tolerance for complications. One click too many, you'll lose a customer. We believe these days it is just impossible to deliver a great customer experience without fantastic digital skills. You notice the claims app? In 50% of all cases, we check claims overnight, automatically. In our hugely complicated reimbursement system in Germany, that's a huge breakthrough. That's actually truly unique. But for our customer, that's still not enough. If you can get a book delivered to your doorstep overnight, then why not get a claim confirmed real time? Hey, there isn't even a logistics chain involved. Well, we have to accept that it's not us who shape customer experience, uh, sorry, expectations anymore. It's other industries. One click shopping, overnight delivery. It's other industries. And clearly no one, no one can ignore these dynamics and expect to be successful in the market. Certainly not when there is competition around the corner. In our case, take fintechs, for example. Here's a look at how fast investment in fintech has been growing in the last years. 19 billion in 2015, and it just keeps on rising. Some of these firms have set new standards in terms of user friendliness, agility, and speed. Some of them are just great. Now, if we as incumbents don't react, our size won't help us. We risk being disrupted from below. Now, we as Allianz, of course, we do react. And that's why, when one part of us does everything to maintain stability and reliability in our backend systems, the other part is equally busy changing everything all the time. One part plans, tests, and executes and release cycles of several months. The other part builds applications in a garage-type atmosphere where user comments are translated into features on the spot and where those features are put into production right away. Now that kind of speed you can only get with an inherently error-loving approach to software development. An approach that quickly cycles through testing, failing, learning, adapting. And then starts again with testing, failing, learning, and adapting. Fail fast is the name of the game. Now, it's hard to imagine that kind of approach being used to our backend systems, and neither would it be appropriate, of course. Yet, both parts of the system, the stable and reliable backend and the fast and agile front end, have to talk to each other have to connect with each other, have to create one seamless end-to-end -end process where the front end has all the flexibility and the back end provides us with the stability to manage contracts over 75 years without a single mistake. Now the answer to that challenge, of course, is a two-speed architecture and this is where PEGA comes into play. PEGA's suite of tools enables us to be agile and fast on the front end and stable and reliable on the back end. How? Well, first of all, we use Pegger as an efficient and dynamic interface between our back end systems and our front end applications. But Pegger has some interesting features in itself. In the claims checking case, for example, Pegger provides a deterministic rules engine. Let me explain how this works. The claims data gets into our system via app or upload. It's then channeled through our backend system to PEGA for processing. PEGA tests for legibility and some rules, some billing rules, and then PEGA calls a module we've realized in R that runs some advanced stochastic analysis. Together, these two modules, the deterministic PEGA one 
and the stochastic R1 jointly can answer all questions in claims management. It's our system of artificial intelligence in claims. Questions would be, for example, is this claim justified? If not, which specific item should be flagged? Shall we pay the claim automatically? Or if not, which specific claims agent should take care of it? Basically, as shown in this case, PEGA allows us to keep our backend system intact with all customer data in one place, safely in one place, and at the same time, employ rules engines that are self-learning, self-adjusting independently of release cycles, and, and that is very important for us, that can be operated by people who know everything about claims and close to nothing about coding. In a nutshell, we use PEGA because on our front end, we cannot wait for long release cycles. And in our backend system, we cannot risk an experimental approach. PEGA allows us to blend the benefits of stability and agility in our systems. PEGA gives us the freedom to move from either or to both and, both stable and reliable and agile and fast. Now, needless to say, all this blending of agility and stability has had implications on the way we work. No longer do we automatically use a waterfall approach to software development. We're agile now. Well, at least in most cases. And this agility has also rubbed off to our largest IT project ever, the complete migration from all our legacy systems to a modern, totally cool One Alliance infrastructure platform. This platform will allow us to manage contracts not only over 75 years, but also across 70 countries. What this project means for us, you can easily estimate when you keep our history in mind. What this project means for us, both in terms of efficiency gain, but also in terms of challenges in the migration. It's daunting. Anyway, promoting agile development in a project of that size is no easy task, as I've learned. Too many people involved, too much at stake. With all those challenges ahead of us, the appetite for change was not very pronounced in the beginning. But then, budget estimates reached a point where we as management team decided that this is not acceptable anymore, just not. Something had to change. So we dug real deep. We challenged all assumptions. And out came the ugly truth. We just needed a step change and productivity increase. No more, no less. At that point, our project leaders decided to extend PEGA's agile approach to just about everyone in that humongous project. In a matter of a few weeks, we co-located all our IT architects, software engineers, user interface designers, content experts, and of course, our friends from Pega Systems to one common office space in Munich. It was a gigantic nightmare. <laughs> we don't usually have empty office space sitting around in our buildings, as you can imagine, let alone of that size. But everyone was very helpful, the Allianz family, and the payoff is just great. We actually managed a huge, big improvement in our activities just through co-location. In a matter of a few weeks, we changed both speed and quality of our work. Let me just give you one single number we actually tripled the number of demands we could put into one release. And we did so with less, even less defects than before. Thank you, thank you. And the secret was, well, let's try. 
In the first week after the migration, a young guy came to me with a big grin on his face, telling me that they finally, finally solved an issue they've been struggling with for so long. When I asked him how, he said, it's the much increased richness in problem solving we are having now that we sit next to each other rather than in different departments. Sounds totally trivial, doesn't it? But it is not. We've learned it is not. It's a world of a difference. We believe we are up to something great here. And we know this is just the beginning. Now, before I end, let me take the opportunity to thank my Allianz colleagues for fearlessly leading a digital transformation. Let me also thank our friends from Pega Systems for embarking with us on this journey. And most importantly, let me thank you for having been such a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. Have a great time at Pega World. Thank you.